hi guys so welcome back to my youtube channel please if you are new to this channel consider subscribing so on today's video i'm going to be talking about peak formations in the entries because don't forget that yeah for you to make for you to make entries on btmm you must know how to trick trade the peak if you don't know how to trade the peak you are in trouble so you must really pay attention to every detail and it is also important that you start from the basics unless if you know if you know trading but if you don't please start from the basics hey, what is for example the basic there might be information there yeah, which is very important for you to trade then for this video to actually make sense to you if you are actually new to this channel you must consider watching videos from a if you're a btmm trader you must maybe start from levels levels video how to count levels using moving averages and then move on to how to count levels using the tti and then you must also watch the top down analysis video then after that you must then watch this video so that it makes sense everything comes together then if you haven't watched any of my videos you must start from watching btmm template the basics id50 that those terminologies the nitty gritties you must understand the language so that you don't come to my inbox they, 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 i have seen people who come to my inbox asking me hey what do you hey how do you do that and some of them they, they haven't even done it they don't even submit anything they just want me to tell them things no guys you must actually show that you want to participate and you want to be involved you must send uh, something if you have seen a london pattern if you want to if you want help on how to draw you send a screenshot it, it, it's not even a complicated thing you just send a screenshot or something guys not just come to my inbox and say i don't understand everything uh, i'm sorry guys i will just blue tick <laughs> so yes so i will before i move in to talk about peak formations i'll first uh, give a, a recap on the on these the videos which i talked about so in these videos i emphasize that levels are very important and it is very important to actually know your levels to know how the tit i plays a role in the in the counting of levels how it's helpful in 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 in, in detecting a, a reversal pattern so if you you were watching my videos a uh, by now you 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 should have seen that uh, the tdi is a is a market sentiment indicator it can actually predict the change in the in the trend direction before it actually happens how does it do that if you don't know please go and watch that video <laughs> so right guys and then i also talked about in in the top down analysis i also talked about using the tdi to then go and do the top down analysis so it is very important for you to understand how the tdi plays a, a, an important role yes i know uh, maybe some of you are confused on whether you should count levels using the moving averages or using the tdi for me counting levels or let me not say counting levels market bias for me is determined by the tdi and then when the tdi gives a market bias i then look at my moving averages so i know let's say the tdi is the red line is crossed the yellow line on h1 i know that we must let's say we are in is crossed upwards we are buying it is given a buying bias i know that 
I then move on to look at my what at my moving averages, the 13 EMA and the 50 EMA particularly. So what am I looking for? Did the 13 and 50 cross? So if the 13 and 50 cross did the the, the cross hasn't happened there, it means that that's a peak because there is no 13 and 50 cross. Therefore, I'm now looking for what non-confirmed market reset. If let's say the 13 and 50 cross the crossover has happened then i i know that it's a what it's a confirmed market reset then what do i do next i then start looking for what london patterns so on the top down analysis video i just gave an overview on of how you should actually what you should actually uh, do the top down analysis so on this video i'll just give one example i won't do much because people were complaining uh, actually people were coming to my inbox and saying hey your, your videos are too long what, what 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 so on this video i'll then start by talking about what the peak formation so if you are looking at the peak formation you must first answer the question why why does a peak form what's its aim like what is the purpose why is the broker or whoever controls the market a, a presenting it the way it is being presented a, then what what is the importance of knowing how to trade the the, the the peak because it is a very important thing to to know how to trade and then you must also understand or be able to actually say the TTI has a big role to play in the in giving market direction. So I'll go to my drawing board and actually start from there. Right. So <clears throat> a peak formation. is usually an M or W. So we always start from the basics. I'm sure. If you have been watching my videos, you now know this is the basic structure. And on M15, I showed you how you then do the in, in the top-down analysis video. So now you can see that BTMM is mainly based on whether or it actually implies that a peak formation is an M or a W. Although we see that the the ICT or if you are using ICT, it mainly focuses on breaker block pattern or it focuses on this structure whereby we start seeing uh, maybe we have this an order block there and then the price continues. Something like that as a reversal pattern. And so as for BTMM, BTMM simply says we are looking for a what for an M or a W. So, if ICT guys talk about a, if the BTMM guys say this is an M, the market move like this. For ICT guys, they will be saying. They are marking their points. So for a BTM trader, if you are looking at this, this is an M. But for an ICT guy, you may actually say, ah, now the market is shifted and it is now forming what? Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, etc, etc. So, but the concept is, is just the same. So if you are a BTMM trader, which is anyway the backbone of what I use to trade. So... If you are a BTMM trader, an M is formed to trap traders. So let's say uh, you know that the market moves like this. Now, the market, let's say you don't know what you are doing. You are not even using the TDI indicator. The market will come there. And obviously, if you are what? 
if you are treating the trend or if you you say hey higher higher high higher lows higher high higher low, you be anticipating that here yeah, the market will what will move like this so what does the broker do maybe you've put something there psychological support and then the market drops there what then happens the dealer will break that structure either you will use a week or or whatever you will use and then you 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 enter the trade and then soon after you you enter maybe you want to buy you then start by a long week then you're like ah i'm in loss then the dealer reverses again and he, so if you were buying you were in loss and then you are now saying ah let me buy the dealer comes back here some are afraid to trade there so they put pending buy orders so that if the market breaks that structure it then continues to move in that direction what does the dealer do he triggers everything there and also remember some of the people here were actually trying to what were trying to to buy so but they were stopped out there someone tried to sell they were being stopped there everything is not working at, the, at, those, at those points so what then happens we've got an m which forms the second leg might be higher to trigger the pending buy orders which are saying we're going in that direction and then the dealer moves down and everyone is in loss so an m structure is really complicated i actually put another video which actually explains the m or w formation in in a different angle than the way i i had put it but the bottom line is an m or a peak formation is there to to trap traders it's, it's if you don't know what you are doing ah you'll be <laughs> you'll be trapped and you'll be in in, in loss so on this video and uh, if you are to trade peaks so peaks <clears throat> number one how do you then trade peaks you must know how to count levels or how to identify the market maker cycle number one number two you must be able to drop down to a lower time frame to look for certain patterns that that was the aim for me to put a video on top down analysis and then number three you must be able to put a to to you must be able to identify a the conditions which are actually ideal for you to make a certain trade you don't just say it's an M, so I must enter a trade. No, if you approach it like that, guys, you'll be in trouble. And then number four, you must know how to put a stop loss. That is very important. Where do you put a stop loss? What is your take profit? Those points, you must understand them. So, right. Let me on this part. I, I think I need to go on charts because this is more practical than theory based. Right. So on this video, first things first. I said the first leg. Remember the target is to trade the what, the second leg of a W or an M. So I said the first leg. You see it by crossover. Don't forget we are looking at the what. At the TTI, we said the red line should be above the what the yellow line, giving us a what we are now buying. If it's above, we are now buying. Point number one. So here, yeah. then I said after that you must look for what London patterns. So if you are looking for a London pattern, you are not really looking for that. Uh, maybe let's say you are looking at type one or type two or type three what you are anticipating actually we said first leg is formed by what by crossover of the red line and yellow line so on m15 i said if you've got 
something like this on m15 so if this is h1 on m15 we are expecting to see something like this so it means that in this in this case let's say we were here we have formed the what the first leg so on m15 we would expect to find something like this up to this point where the market actually drops down like this remember i'm going to be giving one example in some of you guys if you are really interested you can actually send homeworks to my inbox so that i, I help you out so now you know that this this whole thing this first v since we've got a cross here you know that on m15 you will see something like this now so what does this mean let me go on m15 so that it's clear right on m15 we look at the what don't forget we are looking at both the tti and the charts so here for entries we are more particularly worried about the tti because the tti has given us something it has said we are now buying so what do we expect the first leg we said <laughs> We expect that the red line should cross above the yellow line. And so we expect sort of like an MPO bounce, but not quite. But the bottom line is the first leg. So it means all of this was the first leg or not on M15. And then we can actually see the recross. It means this was the second leg because it is the first recross of what on the M15 time frame. And then what then happens? a uh, and we said it must on m15 if we've got this we expect to see something like this right coming on to what on the tti you can see that it recrossed the red line crossed the yellow line and it was below and then we with this recross it means in actual fact this was the first leg so this part becomes the what the second leg of what of our of our w remember i said it's one two if we are in 15 this v is equal to what is indeed this what you are look, you're seeing right there let, let me uh, on m15 yeah this is what you are looking at right there and right there. It means on M15, uh, this whole structure, which is just a, uh, well, let me use, which is just 1V, 1V, the first leg is equal to what? On M15, we are looking at. <coughs> this whole thing was the what the first leg so what are our, what are our expectations we know that the second leg now we are anticipating a second leg so how do you then anticipate a second leg if you watch the video on the how to use a, the tti to count levels usually the first leg or let me say the first leg of m15 especially if you are looking for entries now you see that it's always a shark fin. So we've got one leg outside all the time. Please go and check your charts. Or oh, I'll actually give another example. It's just that people were complaining about uh, this video, be, these videos being too long. So the first leg, you can see it. It's a shark fin. So we know that that is our what, that is our first leg. Now, what is our next move? We are anticipating that the red line must then so if you want to anticipate the lowest point which a first leg will reach you just look at the shark fin if a shark fin forms on m15 and they are anticipating the second leg you see a shark fin but that is if you want to trade the first leg for me i'll teach you how to trade the second leg of m15 because we are using this 
diagram. Your entry should be here. Guys, it should be here. You can trade this one if you are me, but <laughs> if you are you, don't advise you to trade this one because this is the BTMM proper if you are actually trading the BTMM. So, the first leg on M15, we can see it there. This was our first leg. We can see the red line crossing the what? The yellow line. So, you know, the yellow line, it has crossed first leg. Right. What are we then looking for? We are looking for what? For the second leg. So, we are still doing what? Our... Right. It crossed there. So, we know that also you must go and continue to do top down analysis up to m5 so what are we looking for on m5 on m5 i said it should be what it should be a shark fin so we know that this represents the first leg of m15 so now until we are looking at this whole structure we are now looking at this whole structure as a what as a w because let me do it like this. We said H1, right? A M15. And now we're going to M5. So on M5, we know that this is the first leg. So on M5, we're now looking for this. So how do we anticipate this? Again, you must look for what I said. The first leg, you always see it as a what? As a shark fin on what? As a shark fin on M5. So this becomes our what? Our shark fin on M5. Then the second leg now. We are now looking for what? Cross above what? Above the red line on M5. So we have now divided. Let me do it like this. This is our W. So we have now divided everything one out there because the red line is crossed to be above to be above the what to be above the yellow line on m15 so we're now going on m5 to anticipate this whole structure and i said the first leg usually you see it on m15 i say you see it as a shark fin so it means if you see a shark fin on m5 that is the second leg that is that is the first leg of M5 because remember we are now saying H1, M15, M5. That is how you do the top down analysis guys so that it's simple. So this was our first leg. <clears throat> then again it gave us a what? So this becomes our first leg. That's why I was saying if you want to trade the first leg you can actually enter there. Then, so this was our first leg. We're anticipating a what? A recross above. So remember, we have to. So this is now above. We are now going back to H M M one, because you must. But most people, you must know that they usually like to trade there because it is assumed that since we form this on H1, on M15, we are going to form this. And we said the first leg of this structure is a shark fin on M5. People can actually anticipate a trade using this one. Does it make sense? So this is how you do top-down analysis on m15 we can actually move on to another pay or well, let me maybe choose a a current pay now for current pays we must look for always a london patterns all the time because it's it is not ideal for you to trade the what to trade during the asian session if you still remember so we'll start here <coughs> let's focus about this peak right there we're seeing it's now above and then we've got these areas we've got these areas so what do you do next the concept we are now above but this is an asian session you could have entered there let me mark the point 
you could have entered there. Why? So in M15, I said the first leg is usually what a shark fin. We can see the shark fins here. Then the cross happened. The red line is now is now above the yellow line. Then on M5, I said usually see a what a shark fin again. It really means that the first leg of the M5 is formed. So this becomes the M5. If you wanted to trade the second leg, you would have entered there if you can actually see it you could have entered there or there so how do you then confirm that i'm now trading the what the second leg on the second leg on m5 that's where you now took off the id 50 you're not learning those id 50 for nothing guys it must then all come together if you haven't watched video on the id 50 please do so because they are very important you don't just learn things that the reason why they are taught in the ptmm is for you to use them so what am i talking about i'm saying this becomes the what the whole second leg of h1 m15 were expecting a big w right so i said cross above first leg you can see the first leg here and then there was cross of red line and yellow line above then the first leg of the m5 means that we are now in the second leg of what of m15 does it make sense it marks the first point so if you want to enter you can enter there or you can wait on m15 to enter above does it make sense so that's how you do then as for determining stop losses a stop loss should be if you enter there you choose the lowest part so here this is the lowest part and then you then calculate 10 to 15 pips from this point so let's say and i said you enter here so your entry will be somewhere there so for stop loss you come this is the what this was the immediately lowest point so you must then calculate 15 pips at most and then put a stop loss there just that if your entry was there you know that this was your entry most of the time you see the market usually comes and retests but if you put 15 pips you see the yellow line you can't really appreciate its point there yeah you see it it came back to an entry point but it it quickly went up and look at the distance so yeah that's how you 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 enter trades guys please if you are using ptmm you must use it in a zoomed form if you have got any questions my details are actually on the district description below also if you do not have a derive trading account the details are also there on the description account if you are in zimbabwe when there is a broker which actually allows people to deposit in the rtgs you can actually use it to trade otherwise thank you guys for watching this long video sorry it was a long video but <laughs> it's worth it guys please consider subscribing after a good lecture thank you and up until we see each other next time have a good day bye bye